There's a train of coming You don't need no baggage Just get on board All children of God are by destiny children of exploits Designed to thrive where others fail To conquer the obstacles others fear And to do the impossible But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you You'll need faith to make it a reality Faith Moments brought to you by Patrick Penu Ministries would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Penu. Today we want to talk about problems. The question is, can God trust you with problems? I know that is kind of strange to hear a question like that. Can God trust you with problems? Many a times we are expecting and looking for God to trust us with money. We're looking for God to trust us with other things, but we don't think about problems. Can God trust you with problems? Go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, the first chapter and the eighth verse. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 8th verse. Let's see what kind of trouble Paul, the Apostle Paul, was talking about. And then see if you can identify yourself with it. Because again, the question is, can God trust you with problems? Well, God don't give us problems. The devil is the one who gives us problems. Who said that? Who said that to you? What side of the scriptures are you reading? That means you haven't come to know God for who he is. Beloved, I keep saying this, that God is God all by himself. Are you listening to me? He doesn't need no permission from nobody to do whatever he wants to do. He sits in the circles of the universe and he does what he please. Are you listening? He's a self-ordained God. He does whatever he wants. And if you have not come to be in the know in this area of him, today I want you to be in the know that God will send you problems. I remember a spiritual, you know, somebody I considered a senior in the uh, in the ministry prayed a prayer one time for me. And it says that, Father, give Patrick enough problems so that he can know you more. And I thought that was some kind of crazy kind of prayer that anybody could pray, you know, because I'm expecting that God bless him and, you know, make him big and, you know, give him all the money he needs and all the good stuff. You know what I mean? And to hear that kind of prayer, well, down the line, many years down to where I'm talking to you this morning, I have come to mature, you know, to know that, well, God also handles problems. God also handles the same God who handles, you know, the keys to your prosperity also handles the keys to your problems. Are you listening to me? And so uh, I'm not coming, you know, with some sweet words for you this morning, but if you stick with me, you will come to realize that out of your problems will bring you to the place where you ought to be. Glory be to God. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm telling you, but by the time we finish this broadcast, you'll be asking God to send you some problems because you want to get to where you ought to be. And may, most of the times, most of the time, listen, I have searched the scripture and uh, there, there, there isn't one person so far, and I'm still studying, there is not one person so far that God has used mightily that that individual did not face any challenges or problems in life. Are you listening to me? So if you want God to use you, and if you want God's blessings, position yourself for problems too. Because it, it's part of the game. It's part of the package. Are you listening to me? So go with me now to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Let us see the greatest apostle of all. The greatest apostle. Now remember, I always say that when Paul came on the scene, there were apostles there. Okay, he was not the first apostle. But we come to realize that he became the greatest of all. Why? It's because of the, 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 the understanding that Paul had. Beloved, understanding will keep you, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. The understanding will keep you. You better have understanding. Um, most of the time when we also study the word, we see you know, Solomon asking God for wisdom. And that was the best thing that God gave him wisdom. But if you read further, 
you realize that the Bible says that and God added exceeding understanding to Solomon. Because beloved, he, God realized that Solomon had asked for something good. Yes, but he didn't go far. Because under, uh, wisdom by itself cannot get you to decipher things right. You must first understand the situation. Then you'll be able to use wisdom. Are you listening? So go with me now again to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. For we do not, now Paul is speaking here, for we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, for our trouble. Did you see that word there? Trouble which came to us in Asia. I want you to underline trouble. That is what we're talking about today. Trouble, problems. My question to you is, can God trust you with problems? Can God trust you with trouble? Paul is saying, for we don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Number one, troubled. And then number two, we were burdened beyond measure. Number three, above your strength. And number four, so that we despaired despaired even of life. Do you understand that? Okay, we'll come back. Number nine, verse nine. Yes, we had a sentence of death in ourselves. The sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust, in whom we trust in whom we trust, that he will still deliver us. Hallelujah. Let me pause here for a second. Now, there's some very, very serious statements that Paul was making over here. He says, number one, we were troubled. We were troubled. Trouble came to us. Trouble came to us in Asia. Trouble came to us. Now, did they call for the trouble? Well, we will find out. Trouble came to us in Asia. That when trouble came, we were burdened beyond measure. We were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we even, even despaired of life. Have you been in that place before where you are, you, trouble comes to you? It's not that you, you, you went and asked for the trouble. Listen, it's not always that you go and ask for trouble. This is, this is maturity class today hallelujah because i want you listen i god wants his children to come to a place of becoming generals i believe i believe that god wants his children to grow up get out of drinking the milk and begin to chew some bones amen god is looking for generals not babes christianity i have come to realize is not for small boys are you listening to me what have you been through before? What have you been through before? You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You don't know nothing about trouble. So when generals are talking or generals are speaking, be quiet because you don't know nothing. Are you listening to me? Until you've been through where Paul is talking about or where some of us have been through, you don't know nothing about how God even delivers. So be quiet. Now, let's see what Paul is talking about. Paul is now talking about trouble coming to him and that it was above his strength. It was beyond measure and that he even despaired for, of life. Have you been to a place where it's like, man, I mean, I have done everything. I have speak in tongues. I have made a faith confessions. I have confessed the sins of my great, great grandfather, my great, great grandmother, the sins of my nation, the sins of this, the sins of, I mean, you've done everything. And this is where Bible tells you that having done all stand, stand. Are you listening to me? You got to come to the place of believing what God is saying in his word. Remember, scripture tells you and I that everything is going to pass away by the word of God. Amen. The word of God, the word of God will not pass away. So you better believe the word of God and start living on the word of God. If you want to live on what you have, pretty soon you're going to be very, very sorry because you're going to lose it. If it's what you are depending on, 
is not there, you are going to be very miserable. You better start, whether you have it, you don't have it, start trusting in the word of God because the word of God will not pass away. Everything will pass away. Are you listening to me? And so here, listen to what Paul is saying. I, we are talking about troubles. Today we're talking about problems. Can, can God trust you with problems? How do you handle it when it comes? Paul says that trouble came to us in Asia. Wherever you may be, that trouble may come to you. And that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, above your strength. You come to the place where you realize that, man, this is a heavy duty. This is a heavy load. I have fasted for 40 days. I have not seen anything. I have done all that and much more. God, what is happening? What is going on? Have you come to that place of asking yourself that question before? If you haven't been to that place yet, beloved, you are just starting. Because soon and, soon and very soon, you just keep living. Something like that will cross your path. Are you listening? Paul says that beyond strength. Interestingly, when you come to a place like this, and some of us have learned that, beloved, we don't have to trust in ourselves. You know why? How many times have you, have you failed yourself? How many times? I have failed myself so many times. Things that I said I was going to do, well, I failed. I couldn't do it. Well, it didn't stop me there. I'm still keeping on, keeping on. Are you listening to me? And you don't also have to put your faith and trust in men. The Bible said that the armor of flesh will fail you. If you can't trust in your own self, you can't trust in anybody else. Are you listening to me? Listen to what Paul says. He says, but we should not trust in ourselves, but who? In God who raises the dead. How many dead people have you raised this year so far? How many dead people have you resurrected? And so if not, just then put your trust in him. We should not put our trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and he does deliver us. Who delivered us? In other words, you have been delivered before. Whatever you are going through now, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but whatever you are going through now, beloved, if you take an inventory, you will realize that this is not the first time you've been in a position like this. Maybe that, that first one or second one or the third one was different from this one. Are you listening to me? Because yes, indeed, waves of life, waves of life are different. They come in different sizes. Now, if you go and stand by the seashore, you will see that there are waves coming from the top of the ocean. They come in different sizes. So is the life that you are living in. Life's waves are different. They come in different sizes. So what you are going through now may not be exact of what you've been through two years ago, five years ago, or whatever it may be. But I want you to know that it's a good news. And then you don't have to throw in the towel. Listen, God may be stretching your faith so that you can get closer to him. He loves you enough for you to know that you cannot depend on anything else. Listen, if you fail, you're going to come back again to the line and start all over. I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't you are you are probably considering going to see some malam for some, some juju there or whatever to get some quick money to get this thing fast and move in there and all that. Stop that foolish thinking. Stay there. Stay right there and depend on God. He delivered you before. He will do it again. Are you listening to me? Shout amen. Now, so what is going on here is that you must come to the place of knowing that God is able to deliver you because why? He has delivered you before. He did it before and he will do it again. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? God did it for you before and he will do it again. He will do it again because that is what he does best. Are you listening? That is what he does best. That is what God does best. And so I want you to know that you don't need to throw in the towel. You do not need to throw in the towel. Why? Because God is about to do what he does best in your life. Amen? God will do that because that is what he does. Now, remember, he delivered you before and he will do it again. He will do it again. Now, look at what Paul is saying. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death 
and does deliver us. He does deliver us in whom we trust. Now, who do you trust? In a time of trouble, who do you call? There, there comes a time where it, like you in trouble, you are calling everybody all over the place and, and, and all that. Beloved, maturity does not allow you to do those things. Maturity in God. You have to come to the place of knowing that, listen, I, I'm one of those people, I don't have a plan B. I know a lot of people say, oh, plan B, plan A, plan... No, my faith is in God is such that if God does not do it, it's over. That's it. If God doesn't do it, that's it. And that is where I believe God is expecting me to come to that place. That I so trust in him, I so depend on him, that if he does not do it, because you know why? He's the author and the finisher of my faith. He's the beginning and the end of my life. There ain't no in between. No human being created me. Are you listening to me? As a matter of fact, I often say this, and people, some, you know, the other day somebody was asking me, Pastor, why do you talk like that? Well, it's my understanding of who I am. The, the man over there who I refer to as my earthly father, or the woman over there I refer to as my earthly mother, they were channels in which God used to bring me to the earth. They did not manufacture me. Are you, are you listening to me? They don't even know how I was created. Well, both of them coming together to satisfy their sexual needs, God brought me out. Are you listening to me? I'm not trying to, you know, that's another message for another time. But I want you to know that the one who created you and the one who knows even the number of the hair on your head, the one who knows the, the level of blood in your system, the one who knows the level of water in your system, the one who has given you the, 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 the fingerprints that nobody on the face of this earth has except you, the one who made you, he also have a plan for you. And you must go through what he has planned. Are you listening to me? The plan he had for Joseph was for Joseph to go through whatever he had to go through. Accusations that was put on him. Because the whole, I, the whole plan of God was that I, I, he, he created Joseph to become a president. He created Joseph to become a president. But for him to get to becoming a president, I don't want him to do any campaign. I don't want him to be lobbying all over the place. He doesn't have to spend no money that he doesn't even have. So I am just going to use this path and my grace is sufficient for him that irrespective of what he's going through, he will be able to withstand, keep my, his trust in me because I am with him. He understands that I am with him. Scripture says that through all that Joseph was going through, the Lord was with him. Are you listening? I feel like preaching this. He said that I created you and I have plans for you. Your destiny is in my hands. Your future is in my, uh, is in my hands. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard. It has not entered into the heart of any man or prophet or any prophetess. The things that I have prepared for you who love me. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you this morning? God is the one you need to put your trust in. Listen, nobody can do you nothing without God's permission. Witching you and who is what and who is taking you to, you know, some, some, some shrine and putting your picture there and all those things and all that. Listen, Dick, are you telling me that God is not capable and able to take care of you and the demons in which tormenting you? Remember, God himself sends, he, he sends demons on assignment. <laughs> are you listening to me? I want you to know that God is able and capable of taking care of you. But can he trust you with problems? Can God trust you with problems? We read about people like Job. And then we come to the place that some of us used to think that, you know, the, the, the scripture says that uh, um, Job said that what he was afraid of has come to him. So it was fear that brought. No, it was not fear. Job was minding his own business. It was God. If you read the scripture carefully, I've taken you through some, some series of scriptures and a series of messages in this past month here. Go back and get a couple of the, of the messages and listen to, to it you realize that God was behind what Job was going through. And so perhaps God is behind what you are going through, the troubles you are going through. God may be behind. 
It's not for your destruction. Are you listening to me? It's not for your destruction. I'm going to prove it to you. It's not for your destruction. It's for your good. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. If God has said to you that, listen, don't be afraid. I will not put you to shame. And then you come to a place where it's like, well, your, your, your business is all over the place and all that. And, pe and some people are saying, oh, this is shameful. This is not. Now, in who, between the people and God, find out in, 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 in whose assessment is you being put to shame. In whose assessment? Human beings or God? I will believe the word. It don't matter. It does not matter. Here is Joseph's own shirt held by some woman claiming that he tried to rape me. Lying. Have you, have you been lied upon before? Have you heard people slandering your name? Have you seen, have you seen people just passing by to see you and they, 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 they show some funny, funny face and all that. They smile. They are laughing at you in, based on whatever you are going through or whatever you've been through or what somebody has said. I want you to know, beloved, you need to keep your eyes on the ball. Keep your eyes on him. Paul says, in whom we trust. In whom we trust. Watch this. In whom we trust. That he will still deliver us. Hallelujah. My, I love this. He will still deliver us. Why? Because this is not the first time you've been through some challenge of life. Can God trust you with problems? Can God trust you with problems? You want God to trust you with money. You want God to trust you with anointing. You want God to trust you with power. You want God to trust you with wisdom. But can God also trust you with problems, with trouble? Paul says that trouble came to us in Asia. Trouble came to us in Asia. Trouble might have come to you in Ghana. Trouble might have come to you in Accra. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, whatever you are going through or whatever, whatever you may go through, beloved, I am telling you, as long as you are on this earth, David says, trouble only comes to those who are alive. Trouble only comes to the living. If you are dead and gone, then you have no problems. So if you don't want trouble, don't let me say what I said the other day. <laughs> All right? If you don't want no trouble, and if you are sitting down there thinking that, well, contemplating, let me just end this all. Let me just end it. I'm so tired. You know, all these problems, I don't know what I'm going to do. All, that, all you see is that your head is going through the problem. All you see is that you are going through and all those things in it. Listen, don't worry. Let me, let me tell you something. See, this is, where, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where rubber meets the road. You, you call yourself a child of God and you, don't, you haven't experienced God to the core, then you are just starting. When you see the children of Israel, just ask them. They were standing by the seashore. All they see is this big ocean. There's no, no, no other way to go. And they look back and they see their enemies coming back behind them. All right? That is where you, they began to cry them to, to, to if they, they would have gotten some stones, they would have stoned Moses right there. But you see, Moses has been tested. Oh, glory be to God. You have not been tested. That's why you don't have a testimony. You have not been tried and you want to call yourself a general. What kind of scars do, do, can we see on you? When we open the chapters of your book, we can't see nothing. And you want to be called a general? Beloved, just go and join the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the elementary school boys. All right? And, and be quiet and learn. And don't try to make yourself so big as like you have, you, you, you know, you know it because you can quote a scripture or two. Oh, wait. Just keep living. I'm talking about real, real life. Okay? I'm not just talking about some theory, you know, that Christian, Christian theory lifestyle you are living. I'm talking about the practical one. When you see Jesus, ask him, when Jesus was, was chased out of the city, they were going to kill him. He had to run. When you see David, ask him when David had to run for his life. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about practical Christian life. I'm talking about when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, 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 were put in the fire. 
And whilst they were going in, they were still trusting in him. Whom we trust. Who do you put your trust in? And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, claiming or confessing I trust God. And all. I'm talking about when the robber meets the road. When you see that, yes, your face is going through this area of shame and disgrace, would you still confess God? The other day, the other day somebody was telling me, oh, this uh, uh, false accusation or somebody, whatever, and uh, why don't you stop, uh, stop preaching the gospel? I said, the devil is a liar. Stop preaching the gospel. The devil spoke to you. The devil is speaking through you to me. And I commanded the devil to get out of my way. And he thought that maybe I was... I was, I was rebuking him. He did the same thing. Came into Peter, close to Jesus. Peter rebuking Jesus. Can you imagine? It was a devil talking. You got to come to that place. But you haven't come to that place because you, 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 are, you are still a babe. Still drinking milk and you don't even know what's going on. Just keep living. But I want you to know, beloved, if you don't go through anything, you don't have nothing to say. And besides, besides God, wants to know that how much can you trust him. And so don't be quick to praise the devil, in my opinion, but because you give him so many, so much attention. I was sharing with my wife the other day. I mean, just, you know, yesterday I said, there are a lot of people making it and you don't hear any confession, one, one drop of confession about, you know, Satan, the devil and all that. They, they, they are making it. Are you, I mean, why you want to waste your time and everything? Satan, Satan, Satan. The guy is minding his own business. He is already judged and condemned to hell for a thousand years. He is minding his own business. And you are worrying yourself about him. Why don't you find out what, what, what is your destiny about? What has God planned concerning your life? What is God's plan concerning your life? Are you listening to me? Can, can God trust you with problems in whom we trust? That he does deliver us. He does deliver. Verse 10, he says, I love this. Who delivered us from such great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Hallelujah. God will still deliver you. You need to come to that place to believe that God will deliver you. You drink the water when you are thirsty. You don't even pray about it and you don't even know nothing. I mean, you just drink it because you are thirsty. Because you see, you have naturally gone your faith has naturally gone over and above in in trusting the water that it will quench your thirst that's where god wants you and i to get to that we trust him that irrespective like the three hebrew young guys they said listen king we, we want you to know that we trust this our god so much that even if he decides not to deliver us in this fire we will still not burn hallelujah glory man i love this can god trust you with problems can god trust you with money then can god also trust you with problems. Don't only ask God to trust you. The Bible says that when Job had gone through all that troubles, God doubled his trouble. One day, Job lost 10 children. He buried 10 children in his house. One day, one day. How many, how many children have you buried this year? How many people have you buried this year? In one day, 10 caskets in his house. Through it all, through it all, he learned to trust in him. Through it all, he did not open his mouth to curse God. Your actions during the troubled times will determine whether you are cursing God or you are trusting him. His wife, that foolish woman, we have a lot of them around. I don't want to get there today. <laughs> Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Because it's God who is behind this. It ain't nothing that the devil, the devil can do nothing with you because it's God who has blessed you all these years. So it's God who has. And you haven't done anything wrong. You have not sinned. So what is this? Curse him and die. Job says, you speak like one of those stupid women. Because that's how they talk. They open their mouth and you can tell that he has no sense in their head. Are you listening? Can God trust you with trouble? Can he trust you with trouble? Well, I'm going to leave you here for you to answer, think about it and answer that question. Well, as always, as always, this is Reverend Quainu. I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. <laughs> All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. We believe your life has been blessed. Faith Moment with Reverend Patrick Quenu is brought to you by Patrick Quenu Ministries. For copies of this CD or any other messages, please call. There's a train coming. You don't need no 